Hi, my name is Alex. I've got a Ducati 999S and it's a slow starter. So it cranks really, really slowly. So today I intend to upgrade its cranking ability and uh, you're coming along for the journey. First stage is to remove the battery box from the 999. You get a five millimeter, a five millimeter and a four millimeter to remove. So all I'm doing is keeping them in order, five mil, five mil, four mil. So I'm just gently pulling the battery box off. And I'm gonna to need to remove uh, the connector there. I think that's like a water temperature sensor maybe. To remove the thermostat temperature sensor, put a pick here. And what it will do is it will help prise up this metal clip. And you can see that I've released the top part of this clip. And it's, if you can see where I'm pointing here, that's actually part of the temperature sensor, not the connector that we're trying to remove. So it's this metal clip that's holding it in place. So at the top, all I've done is insert a pick, which has released it. I'm gonna do the same at the bottom, which will release it. And then this clip should slide off. So once you've got the metal off, this one will just slide off. The easiest thing to do is make sure that that clip goes straight back into place. And uh, what you're seeing here is it's kind of not gone back into place. So I'm gonna use my pick just to correct it. So hopefully you can see I've uh, repaired it now and that the clip is ready and that will just slide back on. Right, let's get on to the next part. So I've just pulled the battery box out. It's only on the rubber mounts. So I've got a little bit more space to work and I'm just gonna undo this because it's kind of... All you gotta do is push on this tab here and you'll hear a healthy click and then you should be able to separate them. There we go. I'm on the near side of the bike and here's the starter motor. So there's your oil feed lines going to your oil cooler. Here's your starter motor. So you just got to get the weather protection off of it. I'm using a pick because I'm going to replace this cape. You can see there's some corrosion on it and you can see how it feeds through. So it's a 10 millimetre and I'd suggest you use a spanner on it. And lefty loosey. Don't mess around with something like this because all that's going to happen here is you're going to end up needing a starter motor. So a nice, clean movements and try not to apply too much pressure with the spanner up and down. So look at that. Yuck. That's the nut. Here comes the crusty lead with washer. Look at that. Yucky, isn't it? There it is. So I'm just going to clean it up with a wire brush. It's just a bit of brake cleaner. And that's looking better already. So the next stage is to pull the battery box away from the motorcycle because we're going to work on the heat shield. In order to support the battery box, you could get someone to hold it or use a trusty cable tie. The easiest thing to do is to feed a cable tie through the back of the battery box and then attach it to around the frame. That way you don't have to have somebody help you. So with the cable tie in place around the frame, I can now work on the heat shield. You can see I only just removed this crusty from the starter motor. I'm gonna remove the heat shield. But what you're seeing here isn't the screws that have worked their way out. What's actually happened is the heat shield is damaged. And it's very, very common, as you can see here, for the screw to near enough pass through the heat shield and it's little washer that it's got. So one of the things I'm gonna do is retrofit it with much wider washers to stop this happening again. One of the things that's worth noting is the routing of the uh, wires and to match them exactly like for like. One of the things to watch out for is this little 
mullered bit of rubber here, which can fall off, which just is kind of like dampening for the battery box. This is the go cable for the starter motor, which routes to a solenoid here, and the ease of access just isn't there. So I'm going to have to pull all of these cables out and take their little uh, connectors off. So I'm just going to prise the solenoid away from its rubber mounts. So you just got to watch for routing. So here is its terminal on the solenoid. And let's hope it's just a 10 mil to release. I'm just going to clean the connector off. Wow, we're seeing more of that beautiful copper. I have some P1000 and this is the bottom of the nut. Looking better already. So I'm now just fitting it back up onto the solenoid. Turn the mill right tiny. So that's it tightened up on a solenoid and this is going to go to the starter motor. So I'm going to feed this back the way it came, remembering to feed it through here because that's how it was before. Positive connection for the batteries at the top. So the cable is going to, the replacement cable, is actually going to sit here underneath the original cable and run alongside it. So we're literally just beefing it up. So I'm now going to thread this through the battery box. So I'm threading it through so it comes through the back of the battery box. And then I'm going to have it run across the top and follow the original wire. So even though the original positive lead is black and the new one is red, I'm still going to use it. So it's just a 10 mil, remove the nut, clean everything up, and I'm gonna piggyback. And when I say piggyback, what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna have the new electrical wire as the first one that goes onto this terminal. And you can see the copper is a bit oxidized, so we're gonna clean this right up. And then I'm gonna have the old wire over the top, but as you can see, needs a bit of a tidy up because it's looking a bit grim. My favourite way is just to take a wire brush to them and don't forget to do both sides. When it comes to cleaning the terminal, as you can see, a bit of oxidisation going on there and a wire brush will treat that and tidy that up very quickly. Get it from as many angles as you can. This is just brake cleaner which will evaporate very quickly. Leaving us with a tidy looking terminal. Thousand grit sandpaper for the washer and the nut. So I'm going to use the new positive as the primary that goes on the terminal. Then I'm going to use the original over the top. There will not, I don't believe that they'll line up. So one's going to be off by a few degrees. What I can't have is when this solenoid goes back in for one of these to be at an extreme angle so that when the heat shield goes back on, it won't fit. So what all I'm doing at the moment is just trying to uh, get an idea of how they can go together and will fit nicely. So washer on and then the nuts going on. Uh, just tightening it up now. And again, just to show you the kind of angles that I'm working with here, when the solenoid goes back into place, the new positive wire isn't going to be sticking out so far, the heat shield is going to have a problem with it. Okay. Now it's time to refit the solenoid back into its space. Okay, just pulling, pushing the solenoid rubbers back onto its mounts. It can take a little bit of Force. So the only thing I can think I've done wrong here is I fed the positive wire over the top of the regulator wires, whereas the original feeds up 
underneath them. So rather than pulling a solenoid out and undoing it, all I'm going to do is feed the cable out of the battery box. And that's feeding up nicely. And then up under these, and then following the line to the top of the battery box. So I fed the positive wire up into the front of the battery box and everything lines up beautifully. The reason I'm using the, I don't have to, but the reason I'm using the existing cables is it's gonna to carry together, they'll carry more amps, you'd think. This is the negative cable. So and that's at the bottom of the battery box. Again, I'm gonna retain the existing electrics. Let me show you what Ducati electrics were like at the time. If I push this through, pass that out of the way. This is what we got. So a whole lot of a, and then this one here is going up to uh, through the chassis, and then it's going up here to cylinder two. If I try and follow the route of resistance where all the other wires and cables are, I don't think I'm doing myself any favors, to be honest. So I've had a thought that what I will do is attach this to cylinder one, but by coming, careful enough, but by coming, um, like that and then down through this is the earth point on cylinder two or the upper nice cylinder so i'm just going to undo it so i'm just going to clean off the aluminium so I'm just going to clean this off, give me my brush. Okay, so I'm just going to feed the negative cable. So you can see how I've attached this cable, kind of like an L shape coming out towards me. And I'm going to pass the screw through the existing negative and through the new cable, which is closest to cylinder one, and then put the screw in and tighten it up. Just watch out for cross-threading. I'm now going to feed the lead down through the cooling pipes, following the same path. But as you can see here, I'm coming from cylinder two and out and across the water pump and then down, rather than trying to pass it up through the chassis, which is just proving to be uh, silly. So here it is, and it's just meeting up with its counterpart. Uh, pop it into the battery box together. But you've got to be really careful. It's got to go underneath this coolant pipe and above, there's two coolant pipes here. So it's got to come down here and between them or when the battery box sits, this terminal will be, will be straight. But if you don't route it properly, it will be off at an angle. So again, it's coming down here underneath this cooling pipe only and coming in between the two cooling pipes. So we're just refitting the heat shield now, doesn't hurt to clean it up. You've got to make sure that the bottom electrical connector is free and the temperature sensor connector is free and everything else is as it should be. I'm adding larger washers to the screws that hold the heat shield on because of the problem we found earlier. And I'll just button it up. It's worth just taking your time to line everything up and make sure you're happy with it. And the job is good. Okay, I'm now getting the battery box back into uh, position. I've routed the go cable to the starter motor above, coming through the back of the heat shield, coming above the exhaust. And I'm now going to connect up the temperature sensor. That's brilliant. And I'm gonna push the battery box back into position just so it rests on its rubber bungs. This is the starter motor. The go wire is routed through the heat shield. So when attached to starter motor, it won't interfere with the exhaust. Just gonna add the washer, which I've cleaned off with sandpaper. And then the nut, 
which I've cleaned off the mating surfaces. I'd say as tight as a spark plug, but hey, tell me, let's get that weather shield over it. Beautiful. And then just check your routing to make sure that once installed, it's not fouling on anything or going to chafe against anything. I can see there that all I had to do was just push it back into a more suitable place. That is a bit of an edge though. Right there is a little bit of an edge on the heat shield. I'm not gonna tell you I like it, because I don't. So all I'm doing is, I just found a sharp edge that I'm not happy with. Luckily, the heat shield is pliable. So I'm just moving that tiny little bit away from the go wire and now when I stick my finger in there, it's no longer sharp. Lovely. So I'm just putting the battery box on the bike. This is the lower four mil going in. This is the right hand five mil. This is the top five mil. And one of the things you've got to really, really look for is you've got to ensure that the loom itself doesn't get crushed between the heat shield and the chassis. Pretty common mistake. Just be careful. The orientation of the battery in the motorcycle is going to be like this. It's going to have its uh, little rubber anti-dampening. And one of the problems that a lot of Ducati owners have is fitting the nuts and bolts to the battery. So something I was taught a little while ago was uh, little bits of carburetor tube. It's kind of like the runoff tube from carbs. And so, Insert with tube. Okay, and that will hold it in place. We can insert the tube. And then just slide in. And then all I have to do is pop the battery in the bike, put the screws in, and it should be good to go. So this is the original positive lead, which we doubled up on the solenoid earlier. This is the new one. So I'm just going to pass the screw through. There we go. And then I can attach it to the battery when ready. So I put my battery tender lead on it because none of nine seem to be awake all of the time. Got my 10 mil and I'm just going to attach the negative side to the battery. Okay. That's the negative side attached. So now everything's connected. Starting your Ducati should be a little bit easier. Not bad. <laughs> 